Right, yet another look at fighting fantasy, this time yet another one by Ian Livingstone, Temple of Terror. I've got to be honest, a good deal of the books that were written by the actual creators, Ian Livingstone and uh, Steve Jackson, I seem to have picked up more Ian Livingstone's solo books than uh, anything by J Mr Jackson, which is something of a shame because I do understand Jackson is actually quite a good writer in of his own right. But yeah, for some strange reason, most of the books that I've picked up have been either Ian Livingstone's books or um, were books by somebody else. In fact, I think the only book I've got of uh, of Mr. Jackson's is Starship Traveller, which I've already reviewed. And as I pointed out back then, I quite like that. So it's got a picture of Mr. Uh, Livingstone, not Doctor, but Mr. on the back. And then we've got all the usual kind of stuff that you want to normally see. Uh, copyright stuff, dedications and so on. All the rules and regulations, skills, stamina, luck and so on. Sta you know, basically the standard rules. Um, I've got to say the artwork on this is probably uh, a bit more stylized than some of the others. It's a very different look and feel. Although the adventure sheet that I've got here is quite similar to uh, most of the others in general layout. Um, there's really not much to say. We've got a bit of general background and then we've got our introduction. I'll just, you know, I'll just read this one through from the start then. For an old man, yes, Tromo, yes, Tromo, yes, Tromo, yes, Tromo, yes, Tromo. That's how it must be. Yes, Tromo, it's surprisingly sprightly. You cross Red River and the ploughed fields beyond, and soon reach the edge of the forest. Yes, Tromo doesn't, still doesn't stop. He takes a narrow path leading into the dark wall of trees. The light fades, branches and knotted roots obstruct the twisting path and make the walk very tiring. You ask, you ask, Tromo, you ask him why he seems unconcerned at the possibility of being attacked by forest monsters. He chuckles and tells you that his magic is well known and respected by all the creatures for miles around. None would dare challenge Yes, Tromo probably because I couldn't pronounce his name. After spending a peaceful night in the forest, you reach his tower by mid-morning the next day. You follow him up the spiral staircase to a large room at the top of the tower. Shelves, cupboards and cabinets line the walls and are filled with bottles, jars, books, boxes and all manner of strange artefacts. Yes, Romoro, that guy there, that guy there, yep, looks like Gandalf a bit without the hat, slightly bigger nose. He slumps down on his old oak chair, by now looking quite tired from the long journey. About time. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a fragile pair of gold-rimmed spectacles. After placing them on his nose, he peers at you over the top of them, and you feel quite unnerved by his piercing gaze. Finally, he says, anybody who would hope to defeat Malborus... Why do people have such complicated, difficult to pronounce names in some cases? Maybe it's just because I'm tired when I'm reading through this and reading it out loud. Anyone... Hoping to defeat Amalbordos, must certainly know a little magic. You look bright enough to learn some, but I don't think you have time to absorb the ten spells I would like to teach you. By the way, I would like you to know how privileged you are to learn my magic. But a crisis is a crisis. Now, let's get on with it. Which spells should I teach you? You have the choice of open door, creature sleep, magic arrow, language, read symbol, light, fire, jump, detect trap and create water. To make a choice, turn to page 34. Now, that just basically means that you've been given some special abilities unique to this book. Now, that does sometimes happen. Some of the books do have fairly unique uh, systems that are built into themselves beyond the standard skill, stamina, luck, and so on and so forth. There's at least one uh, that I have. I think it's the Samurai novel. I'll have to read through that again at some point that has an honor system where if uh, your honor dr drops to zero you have to k kill yourself because you're now an honorless dog uh, or something along those lines but here we go <laughs> yikes yeah the art is it's very different from a lot of the other books that i've seen it's uh, uh the style carries a different tone altogether and uh, the the pen work seems to be a lot thicker in some places. Not bad in any regard, it's still quite nice to look at. It just gives a very different feel uh, to anything else that I've looked at through any of the other books I've got. Again, I've no idea who the artist is, uh, because I haven't bothered to look the artist up. But I'm just going through 
the page looking at the art itself. That looks like it's been cropped somewhat, as if though uh, some, some, some of the art has been deemed a bit too graphic. I mean, when you see pretty much any other piece of art, it pretty much fills the entire page. But that looks like it's been cropped. If you do a Google search, there is actually some comparisons of original fighting fantasy artwork that was prepared and then the finalised version where certain things were cropped out because it was considered too dark, too graphic. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, the point I'm trying to make though is that although it's very different looking in some regards, that's actually quite acceptable, quite understandable because it helps set each book across somewhat. Uh, I've got to admit that doesn't work, that particular piece of artwork there doesn't work so well for me. Um, I'm not quite sure everything, something about it looks incredibly off in some regard. I'm not quite sure what. Maybe it was one of the last things that the person drew or maybe their style doesn't work too well with their lounging ladies and uh, Elizabeth Taylor type situations. Um, who knows? Some sort of devil dog, death dog as it's called over here. That looks quite suitably menacing. Look at all that drool. Um, and then, oh, yeah, that could be the stuff of nightmares, whether it was in colour or not. Oh, didn't I see that guy in big trouble in Little China? Again, it's strangely clipped in some regards, but what could possibly have been, you know, what could possibly have been done to, uh, what could po possibly have been considered too much to, uh, to have been cut out in that case? Is there a dead body that's just too graphically disturbing to look at? Uh, nice looking castle in the sands. It seems a bit basic in some regards, but there's lots of towers, so uh, plenty of lookouts and opportunities for long distance stuff. Long distance war and whatnot, long distance defence. There's a bridge over troubled water, I bet those are slaves. Or slavers, rather, or smugglers of some sort. Catfish River. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah this is something to do with uh, the early stages of the, of the book. The wizard is taking you uh, away. Probably to find this guy a better d dietitian. That guy looks. Uh... Oh, so this is one of the traders, because yes, you do occasionally get that old RPG stable of traders, people that you can buy stuff from, so what is he selling? Sealing wax for two gold pieces, oinks eggs for three, ivory beetle charm for two, bracelet of mermaid scales for three, silver mirror for four, probably good against vampires I suppose, a crystal key for three, an ebony face mask for three, and a bone flute for two. Hmm, not quite sure what good any of those would do, do but if you've got the cash for it, you may as well go and uh, buy all of them, just to be on the safe side. The torturer. That, you know, that looks quite stylized. That's a very good use of just limiting things to just uh, presumably the the whiteness of the paper itself, and then lots of uh, bits of charcoal to uh, help emulate muscle tone and contours and darkness and so on, and possibly even just a bit of chest hair on the. Uh, Torturer's body. You've got to wonder what kind of person goes around wanting to become a torturer. Oh, yeah, a complete psychopath, that's who. Fire breathing monster. This guy is probably going to have a very sore back in the morning, assuming he's still alive after this encounter. Ooh, that's handy. Skel I, I never knew Skeletor had cousins. Or sons, or whatever. You've actually got the option to cast a, a creature sleep spell. <laughs> um, I somehow get the feeling that might not necessarily work on these two. I think they might have already slept the sleep of the uh, eternally damned, or rather, they probably have already slept the sleep of the eternally damned. Slept the slept? Didn't that guy turn up on Thundercats? I'm pretty sure that guy turned up on Thundercats. There was distinctly one character in Thundercats that had two uh, dual welding weapons of some sort there. Uh, oh, that doesn't look nice. Ratman, Ratman one, Ratman two, and some poor sod that they've uh, decided to eat. I hope he's dead, because if he's still alive, then mm, those two again, I assume, possibly, maybe, maybe they're 
their sons or some other cousins. The first two looked rather muscular though. Oh, that guy looks like Rasputin. Although, no, wait, hang on. That's Malbordus. Malbordus? Sounds like a pack of cigarettes that uh, old smoky cancer man from the X-Files would smoke. Having, you know, crossed out the original name with pe uh, a pen, something like that, and uh, rewritten the br uh, X-Files only brand name because of some sort of copyright infringement worry. Oh, we seem to have crossed over into Dune. Any more? Oh, ooh. Robin Hood turned bad. Robin Hood turned very bad. And that guy's got a stark, starey eyed look to him. Is that the torture that's mentioned here? The man hears you close the door and advances towards you to attack you with his branding iron. Yes, that must be the torture. He looks insane, but he looks like an entirely different torture from what we saw before. Uh, although it could be this guy. Crouched in the corner of the room is a sin sinewy little man wearing ragged sackcloth. On seeing you, such as a wooden pole of the floor. Yeah, so that must be him, the guy with the wild eyes, because he does look sinewy. Oh, that old cliche. Yes, I mean, who actually designs a room like this, a corridor like this? It must be a complete pain if you actually actual owner and occupant and you want to just go to the toilet and you have to battle your way to get to the toilet. On guard! <laughs> Yeah, I think we should see the people. Although, you've got to wonder, what is that bucket over the head uh, going to do? Is it going to do anything? Is it going to be like one of those situations in Skyrim where if you see the bucket full of oil and whatnot and you launch a fireball at it and it explodes and kills all the dragger, is that going to be a similar situation to what this uh, young Philemon what's it is going to uh, be involved in? No comment, Your Honour. That sounds... That sounds like the Sorlock Pit's offspring is uh, making a bid for uh, independence. And I think that might be it as far as main artwork is. No, 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 the creature from Dune is back again, the giant sandworm. So, Temple of Terror. As far as the artwork is concerned, uh, it's very different from what you get elsewhere. Gameplay-wise, Okay, the basic mechanics are there as always. You've just got the unique feature of having certain special magic spells that will either be useless in certain cases or very, very useful uh, when needed. Okay, not everything is actually going to be necessarily useful in all regards. But again, it's a fighting fantasy book and it's written by Ian Livingstone, so that's in itself a mark of quality. So. If you can get this on eBay or something like that, or if you can find the newer versions, the reprints that are being reissued. This was originally book 14. Uh, go for it. I heartily recommend it. It is a good read. It is a very good way of spending a lazy summer afternoon uh, doing nothing but playing a fantasy book and enjoying yourself.